proclaims that for the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there's freedom. We are free to worship God today. Are you free to worship? Let us worship God. Let us worship the Lord in this place today. Lift up our hearts and our minds, our voices and our hands and give God humble praise today because he is good. If you believe that, say amen this morning. Amen, amen this morning. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Oh yeah, the Lord is good. Good morning and welcome to Sunday morning worship with the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. We're located 60 South Parkway, East Memphis, Tennessee, 38106. To all who are viewing via Facebook and YouTube, good morning and God bless you today. We encourage you to come out and enjoy in-person worship at our church. God has been so good. We continue to follow all the protocols with temperature checks, wearing your mask, staying socially distanced. Let's give a shout out to our COVID team who does a great, great job. Let's give them a hand clap. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They do an amazing job. Thank you. And again, thank you. You've been doing great as well. Our order of worship today is we'll have praise and worship in song, scripture and prayer. We have worship in our giving, praise and worship in song again. Then our pastor. Dr. Eric L. Wilson would come and break bread of life with us and share God's word. Prepare your hearts and mind to worship. It's a good thing to give God praise. If you just think about it, how good God has been, you ought to lift up your heart and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth today. Mount Zion and all our guests, our God is worthy and worthy to be praised. Let's celebrate Jesus today. Amen. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. How many of you love him this morning? Anybody love Jesus? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him the praise he deserves. Let's give him the honors he deserves on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on.
have a witness this morning. Anybody love him? Anybody love him with all your heart? Come on, I really love him. given to him that is in misery and life unto the bitter in soul which long for death but it cometh not and dig for it more than for hid treasures which rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they can find the grave why is light given to a man whose way is hid and whom God hath hedged in for my sign cometh before I eat and my roarings are poured out like the waters. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble still came. May the Lord have a blessing to the reader, hearers, and doers of his word. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Father, we come to your throne of grace this morning, bowed heads and humble hearts. We come boldly because you said there is now no condemnation to us because of the work Jesus did at the cross. And we thank you for that. We thank you for food and shelter and clothing, Father. We thank you for last night's sleep and thank you for waking us up this morning in our sound mind, Father, able to reason and rationalize, able to eat our food, taste it and digest it, able to walk and talk, hear and see and smell. We thank you, Father, for guiding us to the house of worship this morning to sing, and praise and pray and study and preach in your holy and divine name. Father, we come this morning confessing our sins, those by omission and those by commission. 
You said in your word, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and you are just to forgive us of our sins and then cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we're standing on that. You said in your word for us to trust in you. Lean not on our own understanding. In everything we do, acknowledge you, and then you will direct our paths, and we are standing on that. Father, we come this morning. Thank you for making us more than conquerors. Thank you for making us righteous and standing in right standing with you. Thank you for justifying us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for being our rock and our buckler, our shield and our horn. Father, you said in your word, you have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. And there is nothing on the other side of all. Father, we thank you this morning. Praise you. Lift you up. Magnify you. Glorify you. Adore you. Bless you. We love you. Say hallelujah to you. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, merciful and mighty, blessed Trinity. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this audience with you. Father, we pray that you give us tender hearts, receptive hearts, so that we can eat your word, chew it, digest it, and then walk it out. Father, let the words of our mouths, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts let them be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Let every heart say amen this morning. Amen. Thank you. I just still in, the song is still in my spirit that I really love the Lord. Because you don't know, each individual person can say that genuinely. You don't know what he's done for you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I'm just, I'm standing before you to get us in the mind of worship and giving. Oh, how wonderful it is. Jesus. And he'll take care of you. We ain't got to worry about the things we need. As long as we trust in God. Brother Jonah shared a scripture that so dear to me. It's Proverbs 3, 5, and 7. If we trust in him and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him, he promised to direct our path. So with everything you get, the money you make, do right with it according to how the, the words say. Don't lean to your own understanding. Do as God has said, and he promised to direct you, keep you. I'm just grateful to the Lord this morning. So all of those that will prepare your hearts to give, uh, you that are on Facebook Live, uh, you can give even right where you are. You can bring your tithes and offerings to 60 South Parkway East. Uh, Mail them, 60 South Parkway East, Memphis, Tennessee, 38106. Or you can use our cash app. The handle is dollar sign, M-T-Z-I-O-N, Memphis. Again, that's dollar sign, M-T-Z-I-O-N, Memphis. Give as God has blessed you. And again, don't lean to your own understanding. Do what the words say, and he promised to direct your path. Let us pray. God, we thank you now for the hearts that are here, those that are listening. God, I ask that you would bless us, that we would be able to be obedient to your word, that we'll take all that we have and do right by it. Your word says that you will keep us in your care. Thank you now, Lord, for those that will give. Bless them that they'll do it according to your word. Bless those that have it, those that don't have it. Oh, God, I pray, oh, Lord, that they will give a service of their talent, oh, Lord, and their time. Keep us in your care, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray this prayer. And for his sake, amen.
Titus, if you come, and those that will bring your gifts, meet the ushers down at the tide box and the trays. Amen. I said the Lord is blessing me right now, oh right now. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. evangelism not sure if pastor wants to come up and but Stephen's going to come now and share after that there will be a song of worship after that it will be the spoken word from our pastor Dr. Abigail Winston Amen. get your hearts together to worship because Amen. God is worthy to be praised Amen, Amen. good morning Mount Zion good morning, good morning. Hopefully y'all had a good week, and I would like to see uh, if, if we did a little homework from, from last week. Uh, so I gave you a challenge last week. I said just witness to one person. Amen. Do you remember one person? Uh, if you did, if you did that, can you just do that there? If you did. Oh, okay, look at that. That's all right. That's a good thing, uh, Mount Zion. That's so good. Um, we should have a burden um, to, to reach people who are lost because our lives are, um, are constantly being tested. And uh, on a daily basis, we have people who are passing away. And... Um, our souls are the things that last forever, whether we are with Christ or whether we're not. Our soul will be with him forever. So um, I won't hold you long. I, I got my timer right here so uh, you don't have to look so much at your phone. <laughs> so, <laughs> so last week we talked about six different types of, can I do this like this that way? I feel more comfortable like this. Okay, so I can kind of like a teacher. Um, so last week we talked about direct, uh, intellectual, testimonial, relation, relational, invitational, and, and, and service. Um, those, those being six different types of evangelism, all right? And we know that evangelism is to present Jesus Christ to men, that under the conviction, the inspiration, and the leadership of the Holy Spirit, they will confess their need 
for a savior. Repent of their sins. Trust Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and serve him through the local church. Okay, this is, this is the evangelism. And so we said that, that our key people that we are, are seeing, we, we have family, we have friends, and we have strangers, right? Okay, so now we're going to kind of get into um, the nitty-gritty of it, all right? So whenever you're going out, whenever you're going out to evangelize, you need to always have a Bible, whether it be a little pocket Bible or whether it be a Bible on your phone, okay? You need to have a Bible. That way, when you are speaking to someone, that you can show them what God has said, okay? Um, and so that's, that's, that's key. If you're taking notes, matter of fact, that'd be real good if we could take some notes. All right, are we ready? So first thing, we're going we're gonna to make sure that we have a Bible, okay? Um, the second thing is we need to make sure that we uh, take them somewhere. So we need, to, we need to take them somewhere. Most common times when, when um, the Bible is so wonderful, um, but most times that uh, when evangelism is going out, people would do the Romans road. And so the Romans road goes like this. Um, you know, there is none righteous, no, not one. This is, this is Romans 10 and can somebody out there tell me where is it? Romans 10 and what? Oh, no, not Romans 10. Romans 3 and 10. Uh, so there is there's none righteous, no, not one. Um, then they have Romans 3 and 23. For, for all have sinned and, and come, come short of the glory of God. All right. You got Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death. These are key scriptures. So I'm, you know, let me just give you the, the scripture. So it's good to write down Romans 3 and 10. Good to write down Romans 6 and 23. Good to write down Romans 3 and 23. Romans 5 and 8. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Those are good, good key scriptures. And it's also good to memorize your scriptures that you are going to go out and, and share with. Um, you can play a little bit. It don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> That'll keep me up longer. I got I got five more minutes. I'm 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 looking at my time. Um, so it's it's good to write those down. Uh, also, let me let me just give you let me finish that Romans roll for you because I have a whole lot of scriptures that I would like for you to have. Um, just and you could just use them as a tool whenever you go out. Um, and so we we said. Uh, Romans 3 and 10, Romans 6, 23, 3 and 23, 5 and 8, Romans 10, 9 and 10, um, Romans 10 and 13. Uh, and that is, um, for whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? So, those are a few scriptures for today. I don't want to overload you today with the scriptures, but next Sunday I will. I'm going to just throw some scriptures out there to you, and I would like for you to write those down. Um, so some, some good questions that can kind of lead you to a conversation with somebody. Um, one question is this. You, you go up to somebody. You say, can you tell me the way to heaven? Can you tell me the way to heaven? Or you can say, number two, you can say, uh, 
Do you know that if you were, if you are born once and die twice, but if you are born twice, you only die once? I'm going to say that question again. This is, this is something that can, you can lead up to, to, leading up to the conversation. You say, do you know that if you are, you are born once, that you die twice? But if you are born twice, that you only die once? Another question is, how can I be saved? You see, when we talk to people who are lost, many times they don't know that answer. And so you being um, a wonderful Christian, you know that answer. And so you will be able to lead them directly where they should go. Another question you can ask them, you can, you can ask them more commonly, do you go to church? Do you go to church? Another question, do you, do you read the Bible? Do you read the Bible? You, you want to make sure that when you are talking to people that you lead them to Christ. Whatever conversation that you have, whatever it is, if it be, what is your occupation? You can say, hey, what, what, what do you do? What is, what is your occupation? And you use their occupation as a way to lead them to Christ, a way to lead them to Christ. They can say, hey, I'm, I'm an officer or, or I'm, a, I'm a teacher. And you use what you know about the Lord and what he's done for you and also what he has done through the saints in his word. And you use that as an avenue to show them Christ. Now, remember... I don't know, let me, okay. So remember, you should never assume, never assume that they are saved. Never assume that. You want to make sure that you share with them before you leave. I need to share with them and make sure I share the gospel with them because I don't know. And that's, that's the thing. We don't know. And, I, you know, you don't know if I am, you know. But it'll be nice if, if I challenge you. I gave you a challenge last week. I'm going to give you two challenges this week. Go out and witness to at least one person. At least one person. And then, if you, if you would like, come up and witness to me. Come up and witness to me. Say, you know, I, I, and I'm always ready. I'm going to give you a hard time because I'm going to I'm I'm do it like how people would be outside. You know, it's not going to be a walk in the park all the time. Sometimes you are going to have roadblocks. You're going to have people who just don't want to hear it. So what do you do when that happens? Do you get so discouraged that you say, you know what, this is not for me. I can't do this. I'm not going to do it anymore. Or do you say, you know what, I'm going to do what God said. He said, shake the dust off, keep on going. Let's keep on going. Because there's plenty of fish out there in the sea for us to get, right? All right. Um, so that is nearing my 10 minutes right there. Um, I, I can't wait to go over it tomorrow. I mean, not tomorrow, but um, next week with you. Um, some more stuff. I, like I said, next week I am going to give you a busload of scriptures. Okay. As a recap, it's good for us to memorize our scripture when we go out and we witness. How many people know John three sixteen? How many people? Let's see. Good job. Y'all so good. Oh, I love y'all. And you know what? God loves it too. Because when you know his scripture, he's walking in, in with you. He, he's all in you. That's that you a walking Bible. And that's what you want to be. You want to be a walking Bible. You want somebody to come up to you and, and, and they get to talking to you. And all of a sudden you just say, well, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And you just keep going and going. That's a blessing. 
God is proud of you. And he wants us to stay on the battlefield like that song we used to sing, stay on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. When we are on the battlefield, we, we need to go out and fish for men. Go out and get them. There's no reason why it should be empty, empty, pew, empty, empty. Mm -mm. But these are the last days. Oh, yeah. These are the last days. So um, I enjoyed talking to y'all. I hope we learned something today. Uh, you, got, you got a few tools today. And next week, we're going to get you some more. And that way, we'll be, we'll be a little more comfortable with sharing our faith with, with people because it's important. Amen. I love y'all in the name of the Lord. and God bless you.
God who I said, if you love the Lord, say amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for each of you. Thank God for your presence today. Hallelujah. Amen. And how important it is, my brothers and sisters, to love God. If you love God, you know how to love folk. Amen. If you don't love God, you don't know how to love folk. I say all of that in light of the fact that thank God for a friend of mine who is here today. Thank, you, thank God for him. He is seeking to be our district attorney. Uh, listen, he is uh, Steve Mulroy, and Steve Mulroy is just a wonderful saint. saint. Stand up, Steve, and uh, he's here. Amen. And listen, y'all, Steve, I... I normally don't let people say anything, but you my friend, and I want folk to hear you. Will y'all let Steve have at least five minutes? Let Steve say what he needs to say. Now listen, he's my friend, and you know I, the only person I ever let speak besides uh, Steve was A.C. Warden. But this is my friend, and um, I want him to share with you. He's in a critical race. And we need to make sure that we get somebody in there that love people. He's already been a civil rights attorney. He's been on our side, amen, and he's just a wonderful soul. Don't be misled by the misleading commercials because it does not tell the real truth and it doesn't tell Steve. It don't tell the whole story. And so unless you know the whole story, uh, you will miss out. And so... I want, I want everybody to really, really get out and vote, and I want you to lift your vote and voice 
for my friend, my brother, Steve Mulroy. Steve, you can come up here if you want to. You can go there, either one. Come on, come on up here so I can hug you. <laughs> Y'all listen to him. Give him your ears for a moment, and then I'll come back and preach to you. Come on. Thank you so much, Pastor Winston. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I am blessed to be here, and I'm grateful to Pastor for giving me this opportunity. I, I, I uh, don't underestimate its importance, and I don't want to interrupt the sanctity of the proceedings, so I will try to be a brief, as uh, Pastor said. I'm Steve Mulroy, and I'm the Democratic nominee for District Attorney. Can I say it like I feel it today? I am running because I am tired of Shelby County and its district attorney's office being the worst. When it comes to, out of all of Tennessee's 95 counties, when it comes to ethical violations, prosecutorial misconduct, this district attorney's office is the worst. Not sharing evidence of innocence when the defense, with the defense like they're supposed to, making prejudicial comments to the jury when they're not supposed to, we're the worst. According to my old shop, the Civil Rights Division of the U.S. Justice Department, we're the worst when it comes to racially discriminatory outcomes in our criminal justice system. And what about transferring children to adult court, 95% of whom are black, every year, we do more than all other counties combined in Tennessee, which an independent federal court monitor called, quote, a toxic combination for African American youth. You wanna guess where we are among all Tennessee's counties? We're the worst. And what kind of crime protection are we getting for all these actions? Well, you know the answer to that as well as I do. Violent crime had been pretty low when the first administration took over, this administration took over, and has been rising steadily over the last decade every year to the point where we're not just worst in the state, we're worst in the country for violent crime. So our incumbent, Amy Wyrick, is not protecting us from crime, not protecting us from discrimination in our system. Aren't you tired of being scared of both the criminals and the criminal justice system itself? Amen. Don't we deserve better than that? Yep. Now, I don't know, what has she been doing? One thing she's been doing, which you may have heard about, is going after people like Pam Moses. Now, Pam didn't know whether she could vote because she had a prior conviction. So she went to the probation office and she asked. And they told her she could. So she tried to vote. She was told wrong. And Amy Wyrick's office went after her, got her a six-year prison sentence. In the same month that a white deputy sheriff who had repeatedly raped a 14-year-old girl got a plea deal, sweetheart deal, no jail time. Raise your hand if you are outraged by this. Now, keep your hand up if you're surprised it happened in Shelby County. Did you know that... In Shelby County, 85% of the prosecutors are white and they go after 90% black defendants. Does that sound fair to you? Fairness is what this race is about and it's what my career has been about. You know, Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice for they shall have their fill. And that hunger and that thirst has animated my entire career. As a civil rights lawyer for the Bill Clinton Justice Department, as a federal prosecutor, as a county commissioner here for eight years and as a University of Memphis law professor where for the last 22 years I've trained an entire generation of Memphis lawyers, black and white, to be prosecutors and defense lawyers. And every one of those years I was in the courts for free working on cases because I saw a situation and I said, that's not fair. Now, Pastor is right. You've been, they've been saying a lot of lies about me, you know, not, wanna, want, not wanting to support the police. All of it's untrue. First thing I ever did when I got on the county commission was to give the law enforcement a raise. I think we should have more police. I think we should spend more on them. We should train them better. We should pay them better. But fairness is part of it too. Everyone needs to be held accountable, including the police, if they break the law. And that's not happening right now. Did you know that in the modern era there's never been a Democratic district attorney in Shelby County? That's what makes this race so special because it's not just about Amy Wyrick or Steve Mulroy, it's about history and it's about change. And we can have that change if we show up. Yep. Pastor's already told you it's important to go out and vote. It absolutely is. Turnout's actually been light the first couple of days. We need to increase that. You need to tell everybody you can, whoever you're going to vote for, 
to make sure that you go out and vote. You know, um, Dr. King said, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. That's true. But here's the thing. It takes brave people to bend that arc. And that's why God gave us people like Pastor Winston, who not only preaches the word, but also gets involved in the community and gets us all to care about social justice issues. But he can't do it alone. We all need to work together for change. So raise your hand if you are ready for change. Now ball your fist and bend that arc of justice. When you go to the polls, early voting is now until July 30th. When you go to the polls, remember this race, this DA's race, this important race, it isn't just a choice between her and him. It's a choice between her and history. I'm Steve Mulroy. Please help me make some history. Thank you very much. God bless you. Let, let, me, let me say this about Steve. It's important to go vote. You know, I just ran for county commissioner. Came close. Lost by 18 votes and went to the neighborhood where I live where people had my sign in their yard. And when I was picking up their signs, they said, is it time to vote yet? It's important. Voter apathy needs to change. And we must, we must get out and tell everybody to get out and vote. This is the man for the job. We had what, Gibbons. Yep. Then we had Wyrick. Yep. We need to make some changes in a hurry. And so this is the man. Cast your votes for this man. And I guarantee you, his heart will lead the way. So do that. Do that. Amen. Thank you, Steve. God bless. Now, listen, I know a lot of times y'all won't the persons to stay here and worship with you and all of that when he's trying to get to as many churches as many people as he can so forgive him if he has to, if he has to leave let him go but know that know that we're supporting you all right thank you steve thank you love you man amen come on y'all give steve a hand oh that's a sorry hand come on give him a hand y'all amen amen you're gonna need somebody on your side god bless you Amen. Amen. Thank God for Steve and thank God for those who are seeking to be uh, public servants. Uh, we thank God for them. And we thank God for each of you for lending him your ear. Uh, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you now for uh, what you are doing. We pray thy blessing upon uh, your word as it goes forth that your people may see you clearer. Lord, you were a game changer. You were a political changer. You spoke, and it changed the whole course of history. Thank you, Lord, for those who love you enough to stand and represent you, even in public sector. Now bless your word as it goes forth before your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you, saints. I have been, over the last few weeks, Quite frankly, for about six weeks, I've been talking to you all about freedom and how important it is to understand what you have in Jesus Christ. And I want to end this series of, of preaching, uh, and I want us to look at a wonderful passage that uh, is found in the gospel according to St. Matthew. Amen. If you will turn there, uh, the gospel according to St. Matthew, and I want to talk about an invitation to intimacy. An invitation to intimacy. And if you would turn with me to Matthew 11, verses 25 through 30, and I'll be reading uh, today from the New Revised Standard Version. Go on and get there. Amen. And if you're able, stand to your feet as I read the word of God to the people of God. Thank God for each of you, and again, thank God for uh, all my friends who are here. Uh, I've had a good day, Steve, because uh, I preached this morning for First Baptist Broad, and Sugarman was there, I had a chance to say hi to him, and then uh, to turn around and to have you, it's just a blessing. Matthew 11, verse 25 through 30, reads like this. 
At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to the to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. Verse 27. All things have been hand handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Verse 28. Come to me, all ye that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. An invitation to intimacy. I know you're probably thinking that this must be, you may be seated, I know you're probably thinking that this must be some type of love triangle because when we think of intimacy, we think of love. But I want to push it a little further because I want you to note that when it comes to intimacy, it means that you've done some planning. Intimacy, let me just get a little close because y'all didn't say nothing when I said that. When it comes to intimacy with my wife, Quinn, I can't just get up and make things pop like popcorn. It takes planning. I got to figure out where to pick up the roses. I got to make sure that I call the restaurant and make reservations. I got to make sure that if somebody's going to sing happy birthday to her, that they're going to do it right. It's some planning when it comes to intimacy in any way. I'll never forget Gwen was working with International Paper. And a friend of mine sings real well. He recently died. His name was Posley Jones. Uh, I paid Posley to put on a tuxedo and take a box of Hershey's Kisses and a flower to Gwen's job. And he sang to her, Lisa. He sang, you are so beautiful. And Gwen said everybody at International Paper was looking and every woman in there was jealous. I'll tell you what, and then Gwen was trying to call me to tell me how much that blessed her spirit. And I knew she would do that, but I wanted that thing to last with her. I wouldn't even answer the phone. <laughs> Setting up for intimacy. Planning processes and things of that nature. And this is what this great invitation that Jesus is sharing with us today. The text says, my brothers and sisters, how important it is to understand that the Lord loves you so much that he wants to be intimate with you. And so first of all, he gives us the greatest invitation ever. He says, come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy Laden, come, come unto me. Great invitation you can ever have when the man who made the universe died for you and, and shares with you says, come. You who are the least can come now to the greatest. Jesus Christ says, because you're talking evangelism. Oh, Jesus, we got the best product. He's the best person. He's the Savior. Ain't nothing even else really that's worth talking about but Jesus. I wish I had some hope in here. But the truth of the matter is, nothing with Jesus. invitation to all of us. He's always there. He 
He is a heavy load bearer and a heavy load sharer. But you got to trust him and believe him. Are y'all listening to me? Do me a favor. Say amen and let me know you're here. That, that's the greatest invitation. But it's not just... You need to gather. I like the text. I like it. I like it with you. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Jesus said, For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. This is an interesting verse. How can Jesus? Talk about yokes and rest in the same sentence. I mean, they don't go together. Yokes are burdens. Resting is reclining. How can Jesus talk about them in the same breath? Yokes represents labor. Rest uh, uh, represents rest. Uh, a yoke is, is a harness that goes around your neck that two oxen would wear whenever they would work and pull a load. But, 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 but how in the world would Jesus say something about a yoke and then rest in the same sentence? When we accept the yoke of Jesus, it suggests that you are submitting to him. It also suggests that you are not pulling your load by yourself. So the person here want to do things their way. Instead of looking at the word, it's not I did it my way, but I'll do it the Lord's way. We have to make sure that we trust him. I heard a country preacher tell me one time, he was talking about this passage, it was awesome. He said, Jesus was a carpenter's son that he knew how to build yokes. And he would build a yoke so that most of the weight would be on him and not on you. All you had to do was just stay connected to the yoke and Jesus would lead the way. That's awesome to me because so often in life we run into certain things that we can't handle some things. So often we run into burdens and situations that come up. So often we run into sicknesses and problems. So often we run into issues and illnesses and we need somebody to help us along the way. Y'all, I'm talking to myself in here. Let me talk to these folk over here. Is there anybody in here that's been so burdened and sick before that you had to lean on the Lord and you couldn't lean on yourself? And had it not been for the Lord who was on your side, you wouldn't be here right now. Don't play with me because God will let some come up in your life where you have to lean on him. All of us need to follow. All of us of the world can sometimes be on our shoulders and we have to trust the Lord. We must allow ourselves to be yoked with Jesus by submitting to him in our life. But it's interesting in the text to me. Verse 29, Jesus promised rest to those who submit to his yoke. But in verse 28, And Jesus says, you will find rest. of your sins because you've accepted him as Lord and Savior but not have the peace of God in your life because you keep fighting against him. You see, God, God uh, uh, died for our sins on Calvary that gave us peace uh, with God. 
That means God won't penalize you for your sin because that's what Jesus died for. But, but my brothers and sisters, if you don't live for the Lord, you don't have no peace in your life. You can be saved and yet live like a sinner. I wish I had some help in here now. Is it hot in here or is it just me by myself? It, it, you can listen to me, my brothers and sisters. The, the, the peace of God is the ongoing assurance that you have with Jesus in the sin in your life. These are they who have accepted him as Lord and Savior. But then they want to do things in a worldly way. My grandmama said this one time to me. She said, what? She said uh, you, you, you want to run under the hat. I wish oh, didn't nobody know what they were talking about. You want to, you want to, you want to, uh, uh, run with the hat, <laughs> but yet hold to the, to, 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 to the hound. You want, you want folks that, you want the church for insurance. Yeah, in case you die. But, but you, but you still, thank you, son, but you still don't, don't have what you need in your life. You still don't have the joy that you desire. It's because you're not learning of him. It is not how long you've been in church. It is how well you've learned about church. I said it's not how long, it's how well. And the reason why you feel like you feel is because you have not submitted to the will of God in your life. Oh, I'm preaching to myself. I knew that wasn't going to give me an amen. I knew it wasn't going to give me an amen because it's just the truth. Amen. The truth of the matter is, uh, my brothers and sisters, we need to make sure that in the midst of everything that we educate ourselves, there's so that you can have godly relaxation. Boy, I tell you, I've worked on this thing for the last three, four weeks, amen. I hope you get it, as, and I hope you're excited about it as I am. To have godly, godly, my brothers and sisters, relaxation. The text says, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. See, the Christian life is supposed to be a life of rest. Listen to me. Peace and rest will come as we relax in the yoke of Christ. I didn't say not do anything. I said, but we relax as we are connected to Christ. For his yoke really is easy and his burden is light. See, Satan wants you to think that anything that has to do with Jesus Christ is hard. That everything, God interrupts your day. I, would, I, I got other things to do. I can't make it to church. And things of that nature. Satan always wants church to look like an interruption of your faith. But the truth of the matter is, uh-uh. When you and you love him so much, you want to spend time with him. Let me tell you how I yoked up with Gwen. When I met Gwen, I had to first find out what she liked. 
I found out what she liked and she liked, and I told you this before, I'll tell you again. She liked new great soul. And it wasn't one store that I knew in Memphis that sold new great soul. Lucky Foods down there on the corner of Third Street and Weaver Road. I used to jump in my car, drive from White Hill to near about Mississippi, pick up a six pack <laughs> of new great soda, roll up at her crib, come to the door. Hey, baby. She said, hey. I said, hey, baby. I pull out the I pull out the new grape soda. When I pull out the new grape soda, we smile. You see 32 teeth. I think she wanted to see the new grape more than she wanted to see me. But but the intimacy of knowing, she knew that I went somewhere special so I could give it to somebody special because she was special to me. And that's what Jesus Christ does for us. My yoke is easy, he says. My burden is light, and that's why reason why it is light for us is because we bore the burden of sin on the cross of Calvary. He died for us because we can't die for ourselves. His blood is shed for us as 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 a sin bearer for us. Back down in Joseph's new tomb, and yet resurrected and coming back again for us is easy. For us, but it wasn't easy for him. He went out the way so that he could be the way and that we would have a way. Trust him. That's the real intimacy of it all. That he so much. his life. But God commended his love toward us. In that, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. He did that for you. He did that for me. And so when this great invitation will come unto me, I will give you a later, and then I will give you rest. That's a blessing. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. That's a blessing. Jesus for yourself. As Lord and Savior, you know that heaven is not only your future home, but you can have heaven right here on earth. Peace of God and peace with God. You can have them both. Just receive the invitation. Now listen, this invitation is not one in which at the bottom of it you have BYOB. Now some of y'all think that means bring, bring, bring your own bottle. I want to change the, the course of it now. If it has BYOB, bring your own Bible. Bring your own Bible. I trust him as Lord and Savior. Invitation has been given to America. You thought it was like when you were invited to the White House and Obama became president. That's nice. But it was something that you invited to the White House when Clinton became president. You thought that was something. Hmm. Invitation ever rendered to humanity. It's when Jesus said, Come unto me. now for this great invitation that Jesus has entered and shared with us. Lord, give us the good sense to receive this invitation, to, to grab it and then educate ourselves and learn to relax in him. We give you the glory. Thank you now for your word. Bless your people. Bless them, Lord. And if there be one that needs to come, Lord, let them come based upon the great invitation that you said. You said if you be lifted up, that you will draw all men unto you. We lifting you up even now, Lord, that you may draw. You got the drawing power. Thank you. 
blessed now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The doors of God's house is open. There might be somebody here right now. Amen. That know if, had, if it had not been for the Lord, you would have been towed up from the floor up. Are you here? Are you here? The doors of God's house is open. Some folks choose silver and gold. Oh, these things they treasure and forget about their soul. Are you here today? The doors of God's house is open. You may come by letter. You may come by Christian experience. You may come as a candidate for oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. The road gets rough. And the, the going gets tough. And the hills are oh, yeah. hard to climb. Hallelujah. I started out a long time ago. There is no doubt in my mind. I decided to make Jesus my choice. Let's say that again. The road is rough. Cause it gets oh, rough. You know the road gets rough. And the going gets tough. And the hills are yes, sir. hard to climb. Hallelujah. Oh, I started out oh, a long time God. ago. And there oh, is no God. doubt in my mind. I decided to make Jesus my choice. Hallelujah. My choice. We see there's room for many. We have none. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for each of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These old burdens, I'm a bad. Harry, these old <laughs> burdens that I'm carrying, I have decided to make Jesus my choice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Bless you. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you. Amen. Uh, have we missed anything? Amen. Now, there are some flyers. Amen. Uh, Sister Porter and Sister Brandon have already started working hard for Women's Month. She wants to make sure that you get flyers into your hands. Amen. She has some. Do some of the ushers have them also? Amen. Amen. Ladies, get one, two, or three and pass them out. Tell somebody about the great efforts that uh, our women are doing here at our church. Amen. We want everybody involved. Amen. And every way we can. I want to say this too. Uh, the Lord has blessed us. You know, people like Crystal Williams recently had a birthday and uh, so many others. Then you just look good. You just look good anyway. So thank God for you. And uh, we want to be in prayer for our members, uh, Sister Lisa uh, and, and Priscilla. Uh, they are here. They recently joined, but uh, their baby sister, Antoinette, we call her Poochie. Poochie is in the hospital, and uh, I want y'all to be praying. Now, listen, the Lord know her name. You can, you can say, Lord, bless Poochie. And, and God, God, knows, God knows her name. Amen. And so, and so, 
that uh, she's in ICU and we want to be in prayer for her uh, as well as all of our members, all right? All right, love you. Thank God for our guests who are here, uh, loved ones who've shown up. Please appreciate you. Amen. Have we missed anything? Amen. Love y'all in the name of the Lord. Don't forget that I'm, I'm serious about voting for Steve. I want to say this in his absence as well as in his presence. He is the best man for the job. And so uh, you want to keep on, let some of your children, you might not get in trouble, let your children and your grandchildren and your neighbor get in trouble. And they throw, the, and they throw I'm talking about they throw rocks at them and hang them. Yeah. Uh, we need somebody that at least be fair. And then the beauty of it is that I can call him. You know, I can say, hey, Steve, listen, you need to know the history of this person. You know, this boy made a mistake. Don't y'all make one by locking him up all his life. You know what I'm saying? Those kinds of things are important. That's what they've been doing all the time. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. You better get on board, baby. I'm telling you. Yes, sir. And be able to help, help your folk. I said, that's what they've been doing all the time. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yes, Amen. 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 I'm, and I mean that. I, I mean that. Let me just throw something out at you. Have you ever seen a Jew standing before a judge downtown? Nope. Never. Nope. Never. Nope. Never. You know why? There's a meeting before the meeting. Uh huh. All right. You're right about it's rarely you see anybody oriental. Uh huh. Right about it. Yeah. I'm just saying what I'm saying. Go downtown. They don't even come to court because mm -mm. right. there's a meeting before the meeting. Yes, sir. And we need to be at the table to have a meeting before the meeting. Yeah. All right, I like it ain't no big deal. All right. All right. All right, I'll be waiting for your call. Amen. And I'm going to help you anyway. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. You want to shout with me? You shouting or you saying something? You want to say something? Come on, say something then, Sister Trustee. That's Sister Lily Plunkett. That's Miss Carver, 19, <laughs> was it 1960-something. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. He's a living testimony yeah. of what of what goes on. Amen. 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 And so we need to be mindful of those. Look, if you ain't never been downtown and put in one of them sales, mm. you don't know how lonely that could be. That's right. That's right. I was arrested once and placed in one of those cells. Yep. I wish I had some witnesses yep. now. And, and you don't want to be, you don't want the sound of them doors shut behind you. Yep. So true. When you hear that door closed, Brother John, man, you know, you know something then. You know what I'm saying? And so we want to make sure that we can keep our folk, uh, you know, justly treated, now, not, not justly treated, fairly treated, and, and make sure that we can keep our people uh, from being part of this uh, justice center, uh, justice system that keeps uh, hurting, herd, H-E-R-D-I-N-G, hurting black men like cattle. Say so. Say into, so. into the system. Amen. And then, and then you wondering why we struggling. Amen. Truth of the matter is because men have so many shackles on them, it's hard for them to stand up with them shackles. And so we need to make sure we start fighting against the injustices of our nation. Love y'all. Uh, have we missed anything? I appreciate you. Thank God for each of you for being here. Amen. Amen. Will you stand to your feet? Let us. 
Let us pray. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, truth, you, God, who slung the stars into their silvery sockets, you hung the moon as a reflector against the sun. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're able to even bring growth of grass. And God, how you can, uh, Lord, you're just awesome in all that you do. Lord, you make stripes show up on a zebra and make hyenas laugh. <laughs> we thank you for who you are. You bring joy into our life. You let little children sit in our laps and play with our face. And it just all kinds of great things that you do. We thank you for worship and how you can bring us into this place and we can talk about Jesus. And celebrate what he has done for us. And we are saved and sanctified saints. Thank you, Lord. Bless now those who are here who may have come as visitors or guests. Lord, let your word manifest itself in their life. Let them know the intimacy that you have for them, that you love them. For you love the world that you gave your son. Thank you. For you are your love. Now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, the sacrificial offering of Jesus the Christ be with you all now and forever. Will you join with me by saying amen. God bless you. I love you. See you next Sunday. God bless you.